Welcome to our lecture line. On the previous video we used Newton's law of cooling in order to calculate how long it would take for the sphere to cool down from let's say 80 degrees centigrade down to 65 degrees centigrade. And we had to calculate the cool down constant in Newton's law of cooling equation. But that's not the case here. Here we have a different scenario. So here we have a sphere that has a certain amount of mass. We have um, the mass can be calculated because we're given the radius as being r and we're given the density as being rho. We also are told that the specific heat of the sphere is equal to c and that the temperature outside is equal to zero kelvin. So we're simply radiating out into empty space, assuming the, the temperature to be cool enough with, so we don't have to worry about it. The emissivity is going to be taken to be one and we're trying to figure out as the temperature drops from T0 to, or from initial T to half of the initial T, how long will that take? So we want to know the time that it takes for the temperature to drop from some initial temperature to half that initial temperature. So these are the only things that are given. Seems kind of odd. You would think, oh, I need to know more information. But let's start with this. First of all, we realize that the rate at which the cooling will occur will depend upon how much heat is contained within the object. So that deals with the heat capacity and the calculation of the heat contained within it. So we can use the equation that Q is equal to mc times the temperature T. Now, we don't know the mass, but of course we can say that the density is equal to the mass divided by the volume. So that means that the mass is equal to the density times the volume. And since we know the radius and we know the density, we can figure out the mass. So that means we can write that Q is equal to M. Oh, no, but that's what we don't want to write. We want to write something differently. Instead of M, we're going to write the density times the volume. So the density times the volume times C times the temperature or the volume can be expressed as density times 4 thirds pi r cubed c times t. And then if we want to calculate the rate at which heat escapes, we can then say that dq dt is equal to uh, the density times 4 thirds pi r cubed times c times the change of the temperature with respect to time. So the amount of heat flowing out of the sphere is going to be proportional to the drop of the temperature with respect to time. Of course, the dt dt is going to be a negative quantity. All right, so then I want to use the Stefan Boltzmann's law. I can say that dq dt is equal to the emissivity times sigma times the surface area of the object times temperature to the fourth power. All right, so what I could do is I can then take dq dt and replace it by this. So let's do that. So we have the density times 4 thirds times pi r cubed times c times the change in the temperature with respect to dt is equal to, and this of course is going to need to be a negative quantity because this is going to be negative quantity. So it's going to be e times sigma times the area that would be the surface area of the sphere that would be 4 pi times r squared times t to the fourth power. Let's put a line in here so we don't get confused. All right, so let's see, we have a pi on both sides. So we can, we can cancel some things. We have a pi on both sides. We have a 4 on both sides. We have an r cubed and an r squared. So the r squared counts out the, the, the two of those. And so let's now look at our simplified equation. So we have uh, density times one third times R times C times DT over DT is equal to minus E sigma T to the fourth power. So what are we looking for again? Because sometimes it helps to keep track of what we're looking for. We're looking for the time. And we're looking for the time when temperature changes from some initial to some final temperature. So that means we're going to have to separate the variables. We bring t over here, the dt over there, so we end up with dt over t to the fourth power is equal to 
uh, that would be the 3 goes over here, so minus 3 sigma, uh, E sigma divided by, we have rho RC here, rho RC, and then we get the DT over here. All right. So in order to integrate both sides, we're going to rewrite this a little bit differently. We're going to write this as a DT, or actually, yeah, let's do it like this. So T to the minus 4 power times dt, bring it up to the numerator, is equal to minus 3 e sigma over rho rc times dt. And when we integrate the two sides like this, we're going to integrate from 0 to t over the entire duration of time that it takes to go from here to here. And from the initial temperature, t sub naught, to the final temperature, t sub naught divided by 2. So that's what we're going to do, and this way we're going to find the time that it requires to do so. So when we integrate the left side, we get t to the minus 3 over minus 3, evaluated from t initial to t final. And on the right side, we get this is equal to minus 3 e sigma over rho rc. And of course, when we plug in the lower limit, we get 0. When we plug in the upper limit, we get t. All right. So now all we have to do is solve that equation for t. So over here, we can then say that, first let's clean this up a little bit more. We take the minus 3, multiply times the minus 3, that gives us 9. So here when we plug in the upper limit, we get uh, 1 over, because it's 1 over t cubed, and we have to plug in this. So 1 over t cubed, which is t initial over 2 quantity cubed. Minus one plug in the lower limit, so that's minus one over t initial cubed. And now when minus three times minus three, that is equal to a positive nine. We have e sigma times time divided by rho r c. All right, we're getting close. So next what we want to do is we want to write this as eight over t initial cubed minus 1 over t initial cubed. So notice now we have it over common denominator by taking 2 cubed and moving to the numerator. And so this is equal to 9 e sigma t over rho rc. And then we have 8 minus 1, that's 7. So that means we have a 7 over t initial cubed is equal to 9 e sigma t over rho rc, and finally, solving that for t. Time is equal to 7 rho rc in the numerator divided by 9 e sigma t sub naught to the third power. And there we go. Seems like an interesting equation, but of course, all they've given us was, they gave us the density, the radius, the specific heat, we know these two are constants, and that's then the initial temperature, quantity cubed, 7, 9, that factor, and that's the amount of time it will take for the temperature to drop from the initial to the final T sub naught over 2. And that is how it's done.